everybody, and welcome to episode seven of That Was a Hoot, a Rocco's Modern Life recap miniseries. Uh, now it's time. Comic time. It's comic time. We are in between that gap of season one and season two. Which I did. We didn't do this intentionally. This is what happened. But I didn't realize that this comic series started and it, it goes on while season two starts because mm-hmm. uh, I think season two starts in September. But uh, and this runs for seven issues, seven months, but starting June 1st of 1994. Mm-hmm which is in the middle of those two seasons. And I thought that was kind of cool that we accidentally fell into doing it that way. Accidentally on purpose. Did we do it on purpose? No, I we're just gonna, lie. Gonna that's tell what them, I'd like to say. We're going to lie to the people and tell them that we did it on purpose? No. Uh, the uh, the cover of the first issue says, TV's whacked out wallaby goes berserk in his own Marvel match. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, they're really like peak 90s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Absolutely. Completely through. The version of the comics that Shad and I have read, if you guys want any uh, yeah. copies of them or anything like that to read along with us as kind we of kind digital. of do that. Are they PDF? Uh, yes, they okay. come out through as PDF. You can be converted over to read on any kind of standard comic right. book reader as exactly. well. Or if you just open it up like through uh, Google Drive or mm-hmm. something to that effect, you can actually just read it as a PDF file and just scroll which is where well we would share it through google drive yeah. or dropbox so if or you guys so. have a link or anything like that get a hold of us either on yeah. twitter or uh on facebook and we can definitely share that with you and Absolutely. uh you can read along yes we can read along so we've got two basically segments like we always typically have mm-hmm. per issue so it's kind of like our issues are a full blown episode, yeah, like a 22 that's minute how it episode. Felt. And that's definitely, yeah, it definitely is how it felt for sure. Um, so issue one, segment one, we've got dental hijinks. We're um, back in the dentist. This is such a fucked up, like everything about this first, like this is how it starts off. And it's just like super <laughs> sets odd. a tone. It really does. <laughs> that they're, it almost is like they're, they're doing some of the things that maybe, maybe they're not, maybe they're scripts or ideas that they were like, I don't know if that's going to go over. Yeah. In the TV this realm. This is like secondary to that. Like they wrote out shit, like extra episodes potentially. And that's like where these fell yeah. in for commonplace. They, they definitely get into the the funky. It seems like they're less regulated than the TV side of things for sure. Yeah. They're, and they're probably playing to more, a more adult audience. Yeah. Not adult, this is more guess, but, catered to the people that would be fans of like a Ren and Stimpy. Yes. I would say more so than Agreed. a Rocco. Even though Rocco does have a tendency to push the envelope mm-hmm. with certain things from time to time. Not as much as those guys do. Yes, absolutely. Agreed. So I think that this definitely goes into that realm. It of falls things. into that territory. So definitely sure. still oriented toward, you know, kids probably between the ages of like seven to 14. Yeah. Is like where that absolutely. would maybe start off. But, you know, I mean, like it's it's more of that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have uh, the credits here and we'll read the credits for these uh, just because they get a little funny. In read their, the minutes in, sir. in their titles. Uh, writer is John. Lewandowski, uh, penciler is Darren Auk, inker is Gary Fields, letter Darren Dave Sharp, colorist Bob Sharon, and then the Whipcracker, which is assumably the editor, is Mike Lackey, and then uh, the creator is, of course, Joe Murray on the book. So, as you could probably presume, uh, we start off opening up on the panel that we are in the dentist again. Uh, Rocco's back at the dentist this time. He's got a rotten tooth. So less than a year later, now he's got a. I mean, if we're going by timeline and we mm-hmm. believe the times to be generally the same, he went from having perfect teeth and one cavity. Uh-huh. Do we think that this rotten tooth is the cavity? I don't think so. I don't yeah. necessarily think so. I think it's maybe just another, just another tooth that's starting to give issues. Gotcha. I think he's just getting older, and mm-hmm. maybe his teeth are starting to give a little bit, even though he's doing regular dental upkeep right but i mean we find out later he may not have been doing the best that he should have probably with his dentist no or dental hygiene uh this time he is not seeing uh filbert as Correct. we had talked about the last time and then who would what was her name dr uh hutchinson hutchinson uh so we are now seeing dr Domencho. yeah uh and uh yeah who would uh i don't blame him for trying to find her do this after everything that happened with filbert the last time yeah. we've had gamma radiation, a giant tooth. And, and to be fair, Filbert did give up, but I don't know. I think my experience as a uh, working under any student of the dental school would be like, mm, I think I'll, I'll pass. Yeah. I'll go to he a He gave up, but he did end up passing. <laughs> That's true. 
So, I mean, he's the- he's he's got some kind of you know credits there. Mm-hmm. I would say, I mean, rather than just running out, you'd seen that he has an instructor that is you know obviously more has more credit, you know, right. credence to that than maybe why why wouldn't he think of like. Oh, I know Dr. Hutchinson because of Filbert. Why would I not try to go to them? Maybe of, uh, she crazy doesn't rat. practice, though. Maybe she is she only, just only teaching. Yeah, that's a good call. Could be. I like that. Uh, so Filbert is in the quarter covered in spider labs or maybe not Filbert. Maybe just at least turtle. just a turtle. It's in really general. hard. Like once we've made this decision that there are other turtles out there yeah. that look exactly like Filbert. But this doesn't fit the suit for it because unless I guess reception work is kind of similar to retail work because we've said that but retail industry. In, in as this, a patient yeah the this turtle is a patient i don't remember that who's distinctly. presumably waiting in the waiting room so long that he's got cobwebs growing okay. on him uh but maybe that was another retail worker that could have been the filbert that was from the grocery store yeah it could be right. a, yeah just another another the turtle that's yeah. just chilling out the turtle family is large yes uh some of the magazines that are in the lobby because we get this kind of like big open one pager with all these people that are waiting in the lobby and mm-hmm. all the magazines and you got to read the magazine covers because sometimes they're funny. Uh, somebody's reading uh, Mouth Rot Monthly, which I believe was like this hippo that just had like rotten teeth. Uh-huh. Uh, Decay Today, Molar Monthly. Uh, there was one called Rinse and then one just called Fun. Mm-hmm. I want to say that the fun is kind of like highlights. I, I think so. That's that's it's just that's the the equivalent because they're always there. Yeah. Uh, Rocco's name gets called. Uh, he gets scared and almost throws himself into a wall thinking with any luck, this will knock out my bum molar. <laughs> he does this multiple times too throughout just... the issue. Like he, anything that could happen to just let it happen and not have to see the dentist. <laughs> I don't know what happened from him going like, nothing can stop me. I'm my teeth are perfect to like, I'm going to, I'm willing to bash I, my head. Like, I was like against... anything that happened, like after your tooth has grown to the proportions oh, of become King point. Kong, I would of course be scared of any dentist that I would step near. <laughs> Valid. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, the nurse is a toad that looks like the big heads. She looks like a fucking methed out version of Bev Bidhead. <laughs> yes. Like not even like her teeth are jagged. Yeah. Like they, they're sharp, weird, like hair. Like, yeah. Like, Looks it's like, like a merkin like, on top of her head. Yeah, like a, she permed a merkin. <laughs> this is something that you should never do. <laughs> it's a permerkin. <laughs> it's weird. A classic permerkin. <laughs> yeah, her teeth are like jagged, like sharp. Um, yeah, she's just weird. I, like, I don't understand. Like, I just wonder, like, Bev doesn't have a, a profession. So right that we know of presumably so, like, ed makes enough money to where she's kind of a stay at home it makes me wonder if there are other toads out there that do something to this ilk mm. like we know that the reception is is a giraffe we see that yes. calling the name so she's technically like a dental hygienist is that maybe like what like toads are like presumably doctor not doctors but like maybe like doctors doctor's aid knows, doctor AIDS type thing maybe yeah. that's their kind of ilk of Could things be. but um, ed isn't ed is ed's a businessman yeah so maybe it's like a gender specific thing. I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe Rocco's, we'll find Rocco's out. Rocco's biased. <laughs> it could be gender biased. Could be. Uh, Rocco is so messed up about this. He's like, if I get out of here alive, I'll never eat another box of sugar sugar cubes again. <laughs> so that's where we're like, okay, well, that's where he messed up. Like, is it like like he just ate a box of sugar cubes? That's or what I think. He eats boxes of sugar cubes regularly, like like Heifer eats the pasture puffies. You know what I mean? I'm gonna like, go with it, that. Like, like that's it's, his, it's like that's his snack. that's his treat. Yeah, is that? I wonder if that's. I didn't. I didn't think about this, but like now it makes me wonder. Thing. Like that's like maybe like a sh- like a salt lick is something for horses. You know, like they always the eat sugar like little, cubes are a nice little treat for yeah, wallabies. Like the, like the, and like a zoo or something. Maybe they give like wallabies and kangaroos like little sugar Could cubes be. as a treat. Absolutely. Kind of thing. It makes me curious if that's that's I, the possibility. I would believe that if you told me it. Uh, the dentist is a a really rough looking mouse. Yeah. That's what you have in the notes. <laughs> I would also like to point out that he is cracked out of his mind, <laughs> almost worse than the big head toad dental hygienist. <laughs> so this is uh, is it like a crack house dentist office? You think? Yeah, this looks like a dentist office that's in a strip mall. <laughs> The giraffe, like not a good really, strip mall either. The like, giraffe looked really clean though. So like, can you imagine like the the receptionist is like, I gotta deal so with long. this nonsense behind me yeah. all of the time. 
She's miserable. She hates her job, and then but she, she needs it because on, her like, husband left her, and she's got to puts on a fucking kids. Walkman and headphones, and then just try to uh, you know anything that she can do to ignore everything else <laughs> yes. that's going on, and then only call out people's names when she has to. That's and why the like phones. people are dying in the waiting room is because like the other ones are like smoking a crack pop and crack crack pop, mm, crack, pop. crack pop <laughs> in the back, uh, and it's just it's just horrible. It's horrible working conditions. Uh, he says, where should we start? Oh, yes, it's coming back to me. X-rays. Which falls into the fact that he is potentially high as a kite because he's yeah, like, we do later on find out that he is definitely high. Plus that gas. 100%. <laughs> yeah, the fucking gas is crazy with this guy. And like not just for Rocco, because it's like the, the whole misleading thing, kind of like, um, what movie was that? With uh-huh. uh, Novocaine. Steve Martin. Is it Novocaine? Maybe. Steve Martin. No, it's a little shop of horrors. Oh, yeah. He's the dentist. In and there a movie. movie called there no- is a movie, a Steve Martin movie called Novocaine. It's a different movie where he's a dentist. And he's but, not maniacal. Yeah, it's a little like shop that. of horrors. Because though. he puts on the fucking mask and he gets and he's some huffing the fucking too. Yeah. anesthesia. He put, wears it like a backpack thing and wears it. And he's like huffing it while he's trying to do <laughs> Rick right. Moran's teeth. <laughs> yeah. And there's like a whole musical number that he's wearing this fucking That's mask right. while it's going on. Shit. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's similar to that. It's what it reminds me Good of. Good point. Uh, so yeah, the next dentist goes in with uh, walks into the room with a, a tray, like a little wheelie tray that has a bunch of dirty looking tools and finds the rotten tooth inside of it, uh, inside of Rocco's mouth and packs Rocco's mouth with a handful of cotton swabs. I don't know why because he didn't do anything to the tooth yet. So many cotton swabs. Why did he He's do that? He's getting prepped. First? He, he wants to make sure that there's, it's, it's dry. dry. Yeah. Okay. But you don't normally use that many cotton swabs. You no, you and put, like, I don't like the cotton swabs aren't like are they always that tiny yeah the cotton swabs that go well, on i mean for they're, oral things? they're kind of like i don't know the things he had they're almost like, like they were like a centimeter kind of a thing don't do this again <laughs> god damn it <laughs> um so yeah yeah you're definitely not supposed to use as many but as the were many. there i'm no thinking what. like probably five to each side would probably do the job probably this is about yeah. 2500 it's a handful it's a, a large it was a very large handful. large handful shoved into his mouth yeah and also i would like to put that whenever he puts it in his mouth there's a panel where his whole hand is in marco's <laughs> mouth with the swabs so he put his fucking filthy hands inside of his mouth too when that was going on and then released it so that happened <laughs> uh then rocco uh then he gasses up rocco uh that, that's again we talked about it too because yeah. he gasses himself before he gasses rocco yes He's like, uh, you know, some, some for some for daddy or whatever he says or something and takes a big puff of it. And it's got green smoke that comes yeah, out of his it's mouth. it's smoggy. I don't understand what that is, but it's not the right kind of gas, I don't think. <laughs> uh, so he gasses up Rocco and says, your tooth and wallet will be gone before you know it when they, you come to. <laughs> they definitely uh, lean on the fact that like Rocco is going to owe a lot of money after this procedure. Uh, yeah. I don't think that was like just owing a lot of money. I think he meant li- like literally he's gonna steal well, I'm wallet. going to steal your wallet when you wake up. Just don't be surprised. It's gone. <laughs> I didn't interpret it that way. But I, I, I felt like better. that's where we're going. With it. <laughs> the gas mask is branded conglomo, which I thought was funny because we don't like we're new to this take on this world like yeah comics are, are are the new version and we don't get we don't have a lot of like so far we don't have a lot of callbacks to other things it's like Rocco is in this whole different world yeah uh, we see a turtle we see a big head esque person but that's really it in this like first story yeah so there's not like a heifer there's not there's not these familiar story parts and so in order to be like oh no we're still here you also you get the Kangamo branding which I thought was a nice little touch uh, we get the uh, really trippy images of what Rocco's seeing while he's under the influence of the yeah. anesthesia. Um, so Rocco freaks out, spits out all the cotton swabs all over the place, uh, pops off the top of the gas tank on accident while that's going on. Uh-huh. Uh, so releasing the fucking green fumes that we had already Everywhere seen now. all over yeah. into and it's just levitated it's to the top of the room. The dentist says, God, it stinks to high heaven, lights a match, and then clear out the room the room explodes and somehow during the course of all the chaos uh the room is damaged and stuff but Rocco's bum tooth yeah. pops out he goes hey that's my tooth and uh, like yeah. something like that <laughs> and it's just like well how did that even happen the whole plot device around this story doesn't even have any sense to it it's not like they had a string 
tied to it and then there was a door on the other side and the no, door got the, blown I guess off i don't understand like what the point of like i guess it was just the vibrations or something that was going <laughs> on or whatever that core like it was about to fall out if that was the case yeah and it had like root and all too so i mean it was just like there was no need to even do any more oral surgery to dig shit out yeah. because everything was attached need to pulled. It. yeah for sure uh so rocco gets state to the saint nico time hospital uh where he's in a full body cast with the doctor next to him, Dr. Demencio, also in a full body cast. And I remember him saying something to the effect of, how does it close out? He says something about, I can't remember I can't off the top remember of my either. head. He has, he has like a, a line that he says. With Demento does? Yeah. Gotcha. Because they're both wearing full body cast right. about something. <laughs> the, uh, my, my question for this issue, the segment is, uh, have you ever been in a situation where you were going to a professional like Dr. Demento and you didn't want them to work on you. Want, like once you met them, you're like, oh, hell no. They ain't touching my mouth or they ain't doing this or they're not. Uh, and you just feel uncomfortable and had to walk away from it. Or did you do what Rocco did and continued on even though you knew in your heart of hearts that you shouldn't? Um, I've had one instance with uh, the doctor that I had before uh, the doctor that I have now. Mm. Um, that was part of the reason that would end up leading to that. Um, that instance won't say the name of the doctor or anything, but Probably I'll just good. give you kind of a brief thing, uh, real quick before I says, um, at, at the very end of it, uh, I pulled up the comic real quick so that yeah. way I could say it, uh, what does he say? Conviscalating same as you, you know, I guess it's true Rocco and Rocco says, what's that? And Spunky's licking his face. He says, misery does love company. Uh, in quote, you know, I guess that saying that he is basically misery. Ah, um, so I was at the doctor, uh, I was having several different issues with different things that were going on, mm -hmm. all things that would eventually correlate with the tick bite stuff that i had had going right. on at one point in time before. And at points in time, my doctor needed to check like kind of everything on me. It was the only time that I had to have my junk checked too. Mm. And I guess he was trying to find means to see if I had like some kind of like a sexually transmitted disease, because oh. I guess some of these issues that I was having was somewhat commonplace with those type of things. He'd asked me if I had like slept around right, with anybody yeah. else or anything like that. And I told him, of course not or whatever, but he still wanted to like check me out because I guess he thought I was lying about all of that. Mm -hmm. Checked out all of that stuff. Um, was looking at my junk, did all of that stuff, uh, was taking notes. And in this office, they take notes with uh, audio transcription. So let's talk into the yeah. little microphone that they have. Absolutely. They say it. And the audio transcription thing that he was having connected to the PC was having technical difficulties. So he went and got a nurse, got uh, an, an additional nurse to see if they could come in. And then there were two techs that were on hand in the hospital that would come in too. So it was me, four other people, <laughs> and the doctor all there. And he's talking about patient's genitalia did not show any kind of drippage yeah. or drainage and stuff like that. And I'm just like, this is so fucking unprofessional because he's doing the talk to text, talking about my junk and everything while that's going on. And it just made me super uncomfortable the entire time mm. that I was just there while this was going on because it's it was like a kind of almost like a HIPAA violation. I have no idea who these people are. I mean, they all work for the hospital, so they've all signed their HIPAA paperwork. So they're they're all in the clear. I know. I mean, it was, so it's it not made a me uncomfortable, though. Yeah. Uh, um, mine, I recently did. I had, uh, I'm, I'm looking to get a new tattoo, uh, one that's a memorial to my grandparents, and I want to use their ashes, right? So I, I go to a local tattoo shop and I say, hey, this is what I'm looking at. This is what I'm thinking of. Uh, you know, have you, do you have any experience with that? And the guy goes, no, but I'd like to learn. <laughs> and I go, Oh, that's cool. And he goes, yeah, I'd, I definitely would, would consider learning how to do that uh, in you, with with you. And uh, and I was like, I'm good. I'm looking for somebody with a little like that's actually like done it before. Experience. <laughs> then I left. <laughs> Cause I, was like, I don't need to be anybody's experiment. Not at all. <laughs> wow. All right. We're on issue one, segment two. This is a test. This is a test. This is a test. Credits. Uh, same as last, except for Darren Auk, our our illustrator, is not with us on this episode issue uh, segment, and has been swapped out with at, with Ed Lazarari. Lazarari, we'll Lazarari, yeah. Uh, there's no the double L's aren't a Y sound in this scenario. I don't think. Um, all the titles have been changed to screenplay, photographers, colorization, titles, director, and then Tom DeFalco is now the producer. 
of this book. Um, but we still have our editor being our director. Our titles, I thought, was a funny way to say that that's your letterer. Um, and then obviously like for- this one was specifically designated this one as a tongue in cheek because it's all correlated it's with the TV. television. Yeah. It's all exactly. correlated. That's around a good that. point. So um, Spider-Man makes his first appearance in the Rocco universe. It's a Marvel book. So this makes sense. Along with a Springsteen reference. Yeah. I, uh, Rocco do you, does it uh, yes. in there as well. Do you uh, notice that that as we continue to read these? There's a lot more uh, modern references or real life references than we got in the actual show. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't always pick up on everything. Like they had that picture that uh, something about like easy there, whatever on like the one of the slug says when they're mm-hmm. at the thing. That was a, a real life reference that I yeah. didn't get that you had straightened out for me. Uh, but very few and far between are the references and we get them like stacked these like pop culture references i feel like it's a little bit easier and maybe a little bit more commonplace when you're doing it in maybe comic book format than it is for it could be television consumption absolutely i guess maybe they're just like this is going to be more for people to just kind of browse around and then they'll get more of a chance to do it as opposed to the tv show maybe maybe they do view this being more not adult oriented but for an older crowd oriented than the television show is kind of leaned toward. It could be. Yeah. And that's kind of why they try to put in a little few more references yeah. here and there because they're like, these people are a little bit older. They're going to read this. So they're going to catch on. They to know these how to read more so than the people that are just watching the show. They know who the boss is. Who is it? Tony Danza Springsteen. Oh, isn't he? Yeah. He's the boss, but also Tony Danza is the boss. Yeah. So many bosses. <laughs> uh, heifers are using pasture puffies, but they're brown this time for some reason. I don't know if that was a, just a like colorization choice or maybe those are about to go bad because if we found out that it is like basically grass yeah, or what do they call it? Chud know. or something like we cud, made it up. Cud whenever they chew the grass. Yeah. Cows chew. You think that, they, you think that pasture cud? puffies is is already is is cow cud? Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily cud. It's just like some kind of like processed version of grass yeah because he's basically just grazing constantly yeah. like a cow would do it's true it's fair that's what i meant like maybe this is like just like already brown because it's about to go bad it's like fall it's bad grass. the grass is dying <laughs> uh they can't find anything to watch on tv we get a lot uh, of commercials oh, tons of commercials yeah tell me about the commercials. we get the uh, the only one that really stands out that we've seen before obviously is a suckomatic yes commercial in there which is a nice little pop to go hey we know where we're at and then also we get pop artist Andy Warthog predicting the future that everyone will have their 15 minutes of fame. I know that's pretty cool because that was like this is before like your TikToks and all your viral videos yeah. and shit like that would come down the pike. Yeah. And then they've they've kind of basically hit the nail on the head with yeah. that kind of thing. And we already, yeah. we already had Andy like, Warhol did. I mean, that's that was yeah. that's a direct quote from him. And and he was right. I mean, yeah, for sure. I know we already talk about like 15 minutes of fame even back then with like TV stuff yeah. and like appearances, you know, was that like, you're going to yeah. get your 15 minutes. Well, that all came from, from Andy. Wall. Yeah. And so that was all, that was all because of his quote unquote idea that everybody's like, he's crazy. But another thing that I'm actually looking at right now too, in one of the panels, it says the chance of a lifetime. And it's one of the slugs from, uh, like the, the carnival trash? kind of a oh. thing. You know what I'm uh, talking about? It looks like one of the slugs. That's people. funny. <laughs> so I don't know if what that's supposed to be like. It almost looks like it might be like on a game show or something right. like that that's kind true. of a thing, which but, might kind of fight follow suit kind of a little bit. Because I mean, like Carney's game shows, right. you know, they're that's both true. kind of game. I believe him. Uh, the, the, Rocco like has a little bit of anger issues in. This is like yeah, the first time that they actually full on just let him be like, like he's. Just, I am angry. He's so annoyed that Heifer just channel surfs. Yeah. Which I was just realizing we don't have a lot of channel surfing anymore. That's kind of an, an, an not so much. Not unless you're like on Pluto, but even yeah. then there's so much there to cater to. You yeah. really don't have to surf. You don't you don't surf for too long. Yeah. Uh but Heifer's just his constant channel surfing. Rocco gets so irritated yeah. that they go in a, a like a tumble fight. Like yeah. there's just like a ball of arms and legs just like going at it. And uh and- That's what this might be the most like we've had points and times in season one where he should have been this irritated or more yes, so absolutely at heifer for the dumb stuff that he's done and then now it's just channel surfing and it's gotten him that irritated yeah. that that's happened yeah it makes me wonder if like this is coming this it's is the climaxing. This, this is the exact same day <laughs> at after, something else. After, after the dentist <laughs> like he's already had a, a shit day earlier <laughs> and then now he's dealing with this and it's just this is like the icing on the cake that's kind true. of a thing absolutely and <laughs> 
And he, you know, Heifer's like the seven you? issues all happen within the span of like three days. Yes. <laughs> and and Heifer is he's like, but I'm I got a show I need to watch in twenty minutes, indicating that Heifer plans on just channel surfing for the next twenty minutes. Yeah, until his show starts, which I kind of get as a child w- with a with a remote control. Like yeah. you just kind of like, oh, I, I got time to kill. I'm just gonna see what all is on over and over and over and over again until my show starts yeah i would probably say i did that too whenever i was a kid you yeah. know knowing like i'm home from school dragon ball z is about to start at like four o'clock yeah i don't really have anything particular that see i want to watch and on. see what else is on but i usually don't like just keep surfing and that's all i do i'll yeah. find something else to try and just churn on for the next 10 15 minutes until it happens but mm-hmm. and then churn back over or whatever yeah that's fair uh, while that's going on, Spunky is chewing on Heifer's pasture puppies that fell on the floor, which just so happened to also fall on top of a cable right. that is connected to the, like a coaxial cable that's connected to the TV. Didn't Heifer even say earlier on, like something about, you know, these pasture puppies really make a mess or something like that. I feel like there's, there's even a line in the book somewhere where he comments at how much is falling on the floor. Um, I don't even yeah, I don't. the very first panel of the uh, of the thing it says these pasture puffies sure are greasy. They're flying everywhere. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> is so it me or is this remote control getting slippery <laughs> whenever he's doing this channel surfing? Okay. And then like Rocco just looks like really uh, just, whatever. He's not mad yet, but yeah. he's getting there. He's in uh he's still down from that gas from the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> he's getting that state of like about to get pissed off. Right. So uh so Spunky's eating up the the fallings of heifers uh-huh. and and gets into that power cable though cuz like you said it, it's the pasture puppies are kind of laying on top of the TV power cable. Is it on the power cable or is that the coax that's going to the TV? Um well I assumed since he got shocked that it was power but uh I think you're right I think it is the coax cable but you don't get electrocuted through coax. I mean you can get electrocuted can it's it's got it's got electricity currently running through a current through it to get to I didn't it. think it was electricity. I thought it was a it was more of an information like a network cable. Uh you can't get shocked by a network cable. No, I mean but it has the ground line that's on the inside of it has like copper lining on the inside of a coax cable. Mm. Well that is I've, electric- electric- I've been electrocuted right? by a coax oh, like have you? plugged into the TV before. Mm. I didn't think that they were that there was electricity running through that. So. I can't really tell where this is going though. But I agree No, that- I'm gonna say it is a well, I, it's hard to say. It looks like on the ground on this panel that it is like the power cable going to the back of the TV. But then where he unplugs it is yes. from the cable box on That's top of I the TV. Thinking. So I'm just like based I, on that visual. I think it's so I wonder if I wonder if, though, if that's actually just the power going to the cable box Could instead be. of to the TV. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, because you do have to have power to a cable box as yeah. well. Because uh, that's almost but the cable like. It doesn't look like a. It kind of looks like a coax. Whenever I they believe unplug it. it, yeah, I think it's coax. Based on that, I, I just, I, I didn't think that there was an electrical current that ran through. Uh, Dude, there's probably not a coax, uh, but I'm pretty sure that like I, I know that that happened before. Whenever I was plugging yeah. in a game console before into the back of a television, and I got electrocuted that way gotcha. on my hand. My fingers went all numb, went tingly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he gets electrocuted, uh, and r- when Rocco told Spunky, "Not do not get electrocuted to gay in an episode that we just did. Remember that? Like, yeah, that happened. That did. Uh, and then he's got electrocuted again. And he's like, God dang it. Spunky got electrocuted again. <laughs> so Rocco pulls that out of the TV um, so that Spunky stops getting shocked, uh, though it would have to be unplugged from the wall to stop the electricity which is 100% valid and true. Yeah. That current is still going to had would have to be going through him. Yeah. It's, it, he plugged it from the wrong spot. Uh, Heifer notices that Rocco is now on TV. Uh, and now that Spunky is uh, conducting an image through his eyeballs and somehow, I guess, sound, I, I guess maybe through, through his, his ears or something. Yeah. Or maybe I his got, mouth. I got the, the sense that he, when he was like, let me test like, the well, and I was like, because one, it was two, like and Spunky like opened his mouth during that time. Oh, okay. And so I thought visually, I was wondering if they were assuming that Spunky was like conducting was his mouth was like a microphone. I didn't know because I was thinking like his eyes and the cameras, maybe his ears. ears that's sense. what they're hearing. Yeah, you know, is what he's hearing. You know, they're seeing what he's seeing. So yeah. maybe that was what it was. Do you see what I see? Just in time. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> it is the holiday. So cold outside. 
It is. Uh, so yeah, we see all of that stuff. We're getting that cross signals onto the TV all around the world. Heifer's starting to wonder if uh, anybody else is starting to get the signal. And as you've said, all around the world, <laughs> yeah. uh, everybody is getting That's it. We're right. starting to get translations from like Russian, from Chinese. We got, we got the French frogs. French frogs. Are we there. got the Asian bugs, mm -hmm. and we have the Russian bears. What kind of Asian bugs are you, you think those are? I don't know. They beetles, like Japanese. Uh, bugs. I think there is like a bug that has a Japanese like Japanese something in it. Japanese, I don't Japanese know. ladybug. It's yellow. Japanese yellow bug. It's a yellow bug. That's what we'll call it. Um, and I d are Ed and uh, the big heads are toads or are they frogs? I thought that they were toads. I thought they were toads as well. Yeah. So these are French toads. Yeah. Uh, not French frogs, but <laughs> <laughs> French frogs. <laughs> <laughs> but we get there. Uh, so Mr. Big Head comes over to the house. Uh clearly pissed off because he doesn't understand what why are you doing? <laughs> it's on his television yeah. every single channel that they try to pan through and stuff uh tries to figure out how he's getting the signal yeah. to he's annoyed uh spunky runs outside to use the bathroom uh but rocco's trying to stop it so no one sees rocky i'm guessing just spunky p yeah i don't know that he would actually like look down and see his wiener peeing out or just probably just see a pee stream yeah but um it seems very he does par for the course for the TV show. Yeah, uh, this is this episode follows suit with more of what I would expect I from would the TV show, Absolutely. as opposed to the last one was a little bit more risque, raunchy, and balls to the wall, yeah, you know, kind of a thing. Like they're like, we're coming out. This is fucking wacky. It's, uh, shit. Up a little bit high, yeah. Um, and this one is more on yeah. par with the course with yeah. that. Uh, so yeah, Punky goes, Spunky goes pee in a fire hydrant, uh, and the French frogs say, "Well, oh, did you see? Did I see what I thought I saw?" <laughs> and the other one says wee wee yeah yeah uh the asian bugs say this is a uh, poor taste even for americans makes sense kind of already just letting us know that uh we're not the best people we're uh, uh we're we got a low bar for entertainment uh i think to I the, less, just, I the think rest of the world most of the world just also thinks that we are just a low bar <laughs> like we're a very powerful country but they just don't look at They're us like, like you know, we when we go to McDonald's, they have like fruit offerings and things like that that yeah. are like a little bit better. And then they're just like, here's your fries with your fried food and your fried we're food. Just nasty people. Yeah. We're, just, we're nasty. I think that's just kind of how they view us. And the bears say, did our ancestors go in the woods? Implying that they're talking about did a bear shit in the woods. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I didn't catch that one, which makes me go like, did he go pee or did he go poop? Uh, I don't know, but uh, but it was hiking though. I thought in the panel, like you could see legs trying to stick up when it was about to happen. Yeah, um, at that time, the eyewitness news shows up, and <laughs> a business weasel offers up up to twenty five million dollars. By the time they get done with negotiations, he lands on twenty five million for the station, which so it is was like funky. this. So this is like I didn't understand. Like, cause last time we saw a weasel was that the mall episode. Oh, I don't remember because he was the he, was he they, the selling there the, was a weasel that was the one that was selling the bowl. So weasels are weasels. They're, they're like literally just anything that I can do to try and swindle you yeah. out of something. Yeah, that's like they're just makes sense. following through with the namesake. Absolutely. That are real sense. weasels like that in real life? I don't know. They've never tried to sell me anything. I you don't know, know if I've ever met a weasel. As a, like are weasels like is that why weasel? We, you know what I mean? Like like we have that like he's being a real weasel. You know, like trying to weasel me out of this or something. Does that mean like weasels are like? scummy assholes could be i yeah. don't know where that came from that's what i'm, I'm wondering i like, wonder if origins like, of that like a weasel did did somebody see like a weasel go up to another animal and like steal something yeah. from them because i would say i've seen more videos and stuff in the nomenclature of today of raccoons doing that stealing shit and yeah. being more assholes than probably weasels yeah let alone i don't know if i've ever seen a weasel in real life ever i haven't either i don't think i know i've seen raccoons i think i <laughs> i do think raccoons are native to north america they are i don't know they're in pocahontas and like <laughs> they like the cartoon <laughs> that's the and point. she like she's friends with miko but i don't know about like like in japan they have like the tanuki and stuff like that is that not is that just all mythology uh, i don't know is a tanuki they're like red they're, panda? They're, they're very like raccoon-esque they're the ones with the giant testicles. I'm not saying that they can't have other versions somewhere else, but the Tanuki doesn't have the same personality as the raccoon. The chat, perhaps. Are Tanukis real? They are. And they're relatives of the raccoon. They don't look exactly like raccoons, but I mean, they're pretty close. Yeah, they do look pretty close. Yeah. But so they came not, across, I think that that's their, their version of raccoons. They came across the ice, maybe. 
the the <laughs> Russian about the Russian yeah. bridge. What's it called? The, the land bridge. I can't think of the name. It's of got it. a name, but we don't need to know it. It does because that's where a lot of the northern natives came from. Yeah, they would walk across that land bridge to be, inhabit uh, North America. Exactly. This is such an educational show. It is all around. Um, Can we do a review podcast about the United <laughs> States? <laughs> Most of it won't be true, but we'll continue on. <laughs> <laughs> Eyewitness News. Uh, Rocco says no. Uh, he calls the the weasel a greedy and disgusting man. Um, and while all of that's happening, obviously it's being broadcast out through Spunky's eyes and ears. Um, and so everyone knows that the weasel's trying to buy the TV station for 25 mil. And... I'm surprised at how many people are angry at this greedy and disgusting man. Yeah. Because they're just, they're ready to like chase him out of town because they're like, how dare you like try to offer Rocco 25 million for his dog who can now yeah. run a TV station on his own. It almost own. makes it like, do they really like, is it just because it's the TV and they're just like, he's just a disgusting, they man, no good person? Or do these people, especially the ones in O Town, really care for Rocco that much as a person. That's true. Or know of him at least enough yeah. that they're like, we're going to help him out. We like Spunky, even though he shits in our sardine bushes. Yeah. Like, because there was probably enough people that would be like that block or that area That's that were true. chasing him out. Yeah. So maybe it was just like a lot of neighbors from like the block or two Not away that he neighbor. might have known. Yeah. You know what I mean? So maybe That's, That's like true. just within the wheelhouse, like people that were at home. Fair. Yeah. That's sure. the only thing I could think of. Yeah. So then uh, Rocco declines him, calls him decree. All of the people run him out. Rocco gets idea for everyone in O-Town to have their 15 minutes of fame uh, in front of Spunky. And there's a line that goes completely all the way down the street with like Ed trying to barge and cut in front of line to other people. So that way he can get into the front door mm -hmm. and get into get his 15 minutes of fame in front of the world, I guess, yeah. basically. I wonder how long that happens for. I, know, I mean, imagine you'd have to take some breaks. Like Spunky would need a break. I meant how long is Spunky going to be like this? <laughs> oh, forever, I would assume. Oh, so he's just a TV forever. It's permanent. <laughs> every, every channel on every station in this world from that moment forward <laughs> is all just Spunky vision. It's, yeah, <laughs> that'd be wild. Like what, what would Spunky have had to have done to undo that? Like, that's what you, I mean. Like I, there has to be something because we know that they, they watch again. We know they watch other TV shows in the next seasons and stuff right. like that. So yeah. I mean, there has to be something that reverses this at some point in time, maybe. Yeah, that like, we just don't know about. Does he chew on a different cord and and he pushes the signal back out of him? What's what's the opposite of TV? Radio. Uh, radio. Maybe he does that. That yeah. reverses it. He chews on a radio cord, gets yeah. electrocuted again, but somehow now he can just he's a radio now. He just like he just radio. he opens his mouth and he barks and like a radio comes out. Could be. If you had uh, your own fifteen minutes of fame, what would you do? Oh man. Uh, if you got your if you got your time in front of Spunky Vision, so I'm wondering like, would I do something that would try to help me submit more time? Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like something like show off a talent of mine. And if you're like, if you like or, more, vote for me. Like, yeah, like of like American Idol of, of the people <laughs> that live on the street. I, I was trying to like, I was like, is there something that like, would I do something like, hey, I'm going to play some music for you and stuff like that, and we will, you know, like you come over with me, we share our 15 minutes, we play, Ooh, you know, you got 30 you know, minutes, we, you know, we play like, Do yeah, we, we make play a, loop like a, a little loop of stuff up, play like, you know, five, six songs or something like that. And be like, if you guys like us, this is where to go. And that's what we utilize it for to get more fame from it. I like that idea. You know, is that what we do? Or do I just do something like, Hey, everybody can see me. I'm going to like, I'm going to shit on TV. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know that I would Maybe ever want to do music. that. But, you know, I mean, it's just like, would I just just tell stupid jokes and then that would be it? Yeah. You're like, here I am I on was, stage. I was definitely already going to go for music Yeah, on my side of things. So yeah. if you're telling me that we can get 30 minutes together to captivate an audience, yeah. then I'm I'm absolutely done for that. It'd be like us versus the devil. Shh. Like Tenacious D Shh. style. Or I don't know. Why do we have to go against the devil? Is I just like I that's what I was thinking, like Tenacious D style. Like we're mm -hmm. we have to come up with the greatest song in the world so that way we can captivate people. We I only see. have the 30 minutes to do it in. Gotcha. Okay. Maybe we come up with a, a song off the top, off the fly. Yeah. To impress people. We have four songs we play that are serious. I'm like, we're gonna make up one for you now with these last 10 minutes. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, I would be like we have to have this well rehearsed, like yeah, perfect there was thirty minutes. One hundred percent, no way that would ever happen. So, 
I'm just speculating because I, like I know it wouldn't happen. Issue two, segment one, intestinal turmoil. Yay. We've got credits again. Uh, Darren Oxback, thank goodness, with our art. Uh, the rest of the team is the same. Dar- Dave Sharp is now uh, went from letterer to Advil and no does is his title. <laughs> And then Tom DeFalco, uh, who was our, I can't remember what his title was last time. Uh, uh, he was a producer the last time? Or yeah, the director? He producer. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, and now he's the chief of police. Everybody else has normal titles, like yeah. illustrator, penciler, whatever, inker. Uh, I really like this concept of yeah. changing shit like yes, that. It's, it, it definitely has captured my attention. Uh, so Heffel and, Heffel and, Rock, Heffel and Wackel. <laughs> Heffer and Rocco are watching TV, and Mr. Big has yelling for them uh, to turn their TV down. Uh, Spunky seems to be having uh, some stomach problems and rubbing his belly on the floor. And but, Rocco decides that that he's going to take him to the bed after that. Yeah. What'd you say? I said his butt. He's rubbing yeah, his butt. He's on doing the, the butt races. Yeah. You have a, does Gertie ever do that? At uh, all? Has she tried? I can't say that I've I'm ever seen her do it. that. No. I don't know. Our cats, cats well, do that? I was, uh, yeah, they do do that. Uh, and it's not necessarily like always a sign of like worms or something. It's part of like their cleaning ritual too. It's certain ones, especially like, like Dexter out of ours probably has maybe the longest hair. Mm-hmm. And uh, if he can't always like reach down there completely to he'll the lick. spot that he needs to get to, he'll sometimes do like a little mini butt race to be like, all right, just in case there's something there, I want to make sure I get it cleaned <laughs> up. So gross. it just lasts for like a second. It's and like just like as a quick wipe, a rug as your toilet paper. Yeah. This is, Oh, it is. It's just step on it right away. <laughs> Or just forget about it. And then now you realize like, oh, I'm probably stepping on toilet paper yeah. all over. I don't like it. Uh, he spells it out. Uh, but the they, V-E-T. Yeah, the vet for him. Uh, but they find out Spunky can spell. <laughs> and Spunky then dumb runs dog, away. He can spell. Yeah, I don't understand some of these like random concepts. I guess that they throw sometimes in like, like animals do know like W-A-L-K. Like if you do it enough and then give them a walk afterwards. Yeah. They'll put together, oh, those two, two things, those yeah. sounds also mean I'm going for a walk. Yeah. They don't really know how to spell, but. Right. So in, in that idea. Uh, but in that spin, if that, in spinning that that way too, does that mean that he goes to the VET often enough that he knows that that's what that means? Potentially, I guess. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah. I'm I mean, a- it seems like a lot. I mean, literally like yesterday in in rocco time on on issues or whatever he was just electrocuted he might need to go to the vet for that to get that corrected so and and a lot of random shit happens to him and he got packaged as meat yeah you know he got condensed down into the little uh chinese takeout box i'm sure maybe a vet might have to like uh i don't know how would you check him out a little bit how would you anti uh chinese takeout box a dog i mean I, I know that like, he's been rolled out with a rolling pin yeah. and then air pumped up. And then yeah. <laughs> that's how it's been fixed. Before. His bones are like mostly cartilage at this point. <laughs> I, yeah. I would assume anyways. Uh, so they find a open window. Rocco asks Heifer if he left it open. Heifer replies with, will I get in trouble if I say yes? <laughs> he's such a child. Heifer he is 100 percent a child. They uh, they do see that Spunky is in the car, which is. A horrible escape plan if you're trying to run away from going to the vet. It's like, yeah. I ran away to the place that I have to go in order to get to the vet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that doesn't seem well. But they we we see them uh, now in the vet's office. And uh, we see a turtle. We see various pets as well as an anthropomorphic animals. Uh, we see, like, it's a mixed bag, which makes sense. Yeah. That in a world where we have pets are pets, but then pets are also, or animals are, animals are pets, but animals are also our people as people well too, sir. That extent. the vet is kind of busy with all of them. Is there isn't probably a regular doctor? I'm curious if we would see ever in this world because I've seen it in other cartoons before. I feel like maybe like Family Guy or something to that effect. But where we have a per like a a pet or a typically what would be a pet like a dog person type yeah. thing like Goofy or whatever. But his pet is like a human being. Oh, if we would ever see that, like not like a full size human, like, like a little mini human. <laughs> And like that's like the animal like on a leash or something like that because I feel like maybe it's like That'd Family Guy or American Dad or something that happens. Okay, and I can't remember exactly which one it was, but I was like, I wonder if we might get something like that eventually, <laughs> some point in time. That'd be wild if it we actually be. got a human in the middle of the Rocco world mm-hmm. at all As in the these pet, comics. Though. 
It, it like it barks. <laughs> yes. Like a, like just a dog, or maybe it just makes some random noise or whatever. Yeah. But it can't talk. Yeah. Or maybe it talks like full on English, but for some reason, everybody else that speaks either ignores it or they just can't understand it. Yeah, I like that concept. You could probably make your own show on that. Uh, yeah, I will. Okay, good. Coming out this next Tuesday. <laughs> Look out for a little man. We get another pop culture reference as they're sitting in the in the vet's office. Uh, Heifer says, "This place looks like a Stephen King novel waiting to happen." Yeah. Uh, so it's like, okay, well now we've now we Heifer knows about Stephen King. It's weird that yes, who is a we, human. We get more of these pop culture references, like way more. It seems like as you go further along to then that that kind of just also kind of leads credence to what I was saying earlier. Like this is necess- This is maybe meant for a more mature audience, not adults, yeah. but kids are going to know Stephen King. Yeah. Most well, I mean, you, you might if you're like 12, 13, 14, you know what I yeah, mean? True. The, I just meant like this might be meant for those people that are yeah. going to comic book stores to pick up stuff like that, that are like maybe like 15, 16, mm-hmm. you know, and at that point in time, are just your like, numbers oh, yeah, keep going up. It's funny. Cause you're well, like, I mean, like, you know, like comics, 11, 12, and then you're like, you know, like 13, 14, all, and then you're like, comics are meant for all ages, but I'm just trying to think of like, <laughs> if it was somebody like our age during high school or something like that, I could see us going to a comic book store to pick this up. Absolutely. Absolutely. At that point in time, for sure. Uh, in the room of the, to see the vet, uh, Rocco says that the table is as cold as a witch's. What does that mean? Uh, like it's cold as witches in here cold it well it's cold as a witch's uh i don't know if it's ass or whatever it's it is tit, but Witch that's is not tit, yeah but that's not what he says he says it's cold as witches in here yeah he doesn't I, say I, I say witches something yeah but i mean like i feel like that that's where the why they kind of cut it short you think that they they censored rocco yeah uh but decided to use a slang term to kind of like explain themselves for i see it. i gotcha and then the vet asked for a stool sample uh, which heifer then gives the vet a stool. Yeah. An actual stool. Just 100% like. <laughs> just to just sit down on. Uh, the vet's face is drawn uh, really weird here. Did you notice that? Like, it's, It is odd. It looks like he's really upset about the stool and then upset that he gets a stool sample afterwards. I think it's just the actual like character it's the itself. Bovine. I think it's just, yeah, the bullish character, character. Like, just face in general. I think he's just meant that way. I was trying to pull up the panel. It's so just odd yeah because it almost like when when they actually hand him the the stool sample it looks like he's he starts, crying he just starts crying yeah it's like why and then he gives uh the nurse uh, the actual sample from the dog I, it's almost like he's upset about the dog sample yeah yeah it's it's weird uh and then the nurse is like she says, don't make such a big stink about it, which one is funny because it's poop. And yeah. then two, but the nurse is in gloves, a mask, has an apron on and is using like medical tongs to like <laughs> take the sample. And but it's like, don't make a big stink about it. Yeah, like a full on gas mask. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. The nurse, now that I'm looking at her, kind of looks like uh, Rocco's old boss, but like as a female version. Oh, yeah. You know, the one the, that always the nose picks his noise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like it, that's who it reminds me of a little <laughs> that's bit. That's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the uh the so uh later uh you know they they go home after the stool sample has been given uh Rocco calls the vet and says what's up doc which is another reference obviously to Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Bunny uh and says I always wanted to say that to a doctor <laughs> 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 which is just like we've never seen this side of Rocco either where he's like Holy kind of like outgoing and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh and then we find out that Spunky has parasitic larvae living in his intestines. Yeah, but is, as far as parasitic larvae go, they seem like they're like full, full grown. They don't seem larvae. They don't. Yeah, they don't seem like babies, small no. like little white things. They're like full on worms. At Agreed. This point. Yeah, yeah. But they're jumping rope with uh, Spunky's intestines and throwing a party. Yeah, they're I believe great they're like counting and stuff like that too. Of the amount, like, it's like two hundred yeah, and two hundred and seventeen, <laughs> two hundred and eighteen. Keep jumping one hundred and seventy seventeen more, and you're gonna beat the record. They say, <laughs> which means that that's happened already inside of yeah. his body because these larvae or whatever that are here been haven't been for a while. That's what I meant. But they haven't been in there that long. I wouldn't think. Yeah, if they're larvae, then they're they're kids. Yeah. You know, they're That's they're true. they're not full grown worms yet. Yeah. But they've played this game before. They have, yeah. Been, That's what I'm saying. They've been they've been playing with his guts for yeah. a minute. And what we find out later is uh these these larvae may or may not the spunky may not be the first place that they've been. Yes. Uh because they, they seem a little mobile. 
Uh, so Heifer picked up Spunky's medicine and they give Spunky the meds. And then Rocco says that they have to wait to see if the worms come out when Spunky does his business. And Heifer asks if he can watch. <laughs> While he's eating a bag of pasture puppies. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> it's so fucking gross. It's such a weird I person. And then uh, Spunky runs outside and over to Mr. Big Head's prized petunias, of course. Uh, and we get this like the sound effect to this automatopoeia of like flur flup. It's F L U R R R P L I L U P P P as our poop sound, which is a gross like somebody had to be like, how are we going to make poop sound today? Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's clear that you know that that's what's happening because you hear Big Head, Big Head on the same panel say, I get sick every time I have to clean up after one of your dog's disgusting messes, <laughs> which means that like Rocco doesn't even have the decency to go over and try and clean up after his dog takes his shit on I, it and stuff I've, like that. I get that. I've I, I've had neighbors not it, since I've owned a house, but I remember like my parents houses like their dogs, like other people's dogs just run wild and they just poop in our yard. Yeah. And and that's not cool. No, it's not cool, but I just like if I was there, like Rocco was there knowing that that was about to happen yeah. on the other side of the bush because Big Head's talking to him, you would know, you would think, you know, like it's my dog, he did his business over there, I should probably go over and clean it up. But Ed's pretty protective of his property too, so like Oh yeah. It's one thing for Spunky to poop on his not yard, but then Rocco's coming on his yard. Too. Then Rocco's Ro- coming on his yard. <laughs> then Rocco's got to like go to his yard yeah. and like then he's like now Rocco's walking over to my yard. So it just feels like a whole ordeal that it's like, Big yeah, I think, brought on I think anything is a whole ordeal with Mr. Big Head. Yeah. Anything oh, that absolutely. happens, no matter like how small it is, yeah. Rocco could step outside and he could get, Oh yeah. Really, you know, perturbed that that's happening, even though he's just outside. Yeah. His house. Absolutely. Uh, so the worms then come marching out of the bushes from the defecation that is there inside uh-huh. of price petunias. Uh, and then they march their way into Mr. Big Head's, uh, uh, to get Mr. Big Head based on what they heard from a caterpillar. <laughs> like that caterpillar says this guy's like kind of a bad dude. Yeah. Uh, and then they uh, go inside of an apple that Mr. Big Head then eats. And we know that we get the worms inside there. He's going to get some rumbly guts. <laughs> yep. Have you uh, have you ever gone to a vet and seen interesting animals like besides cats and dogs? I'm presuming that you've gone to a vet before. Yeah, I've gone to a vet's. Several different vets. Have I you think them, ever seen anything besides a cat or a dog? Bird. You seen a bird before? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a bird out of a vet before. Um, whenever we first got Sherlock and like the end of two thousand, right, right around two thousand twelve. Yeah, I think. Uh, we were living up in Energy at that time, okay. and we had yeah. to go to the other vet. Uh, that's up there in between, like Heron Marion. Uh-huh. I forget what it's called. Heron Marion. Heron Marion. That area. That's yeah. what it's all one word. <laughs> um, Heron. Marion. And uh, whatever hospital we went to, we were in there. They had a uh, patient that was bringing in like a cockatiel for that vet to see. Oh, okay. So I was like, that that that's probably I think the that's only the most experience. exotic thing you've seen in a yeah in a vet's office. Yeah. Issue two, section two. Who invited you? Credits. Food for thought. That would be our writer, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is John uh, Lewandowski. Lewandowski. Mm-hmm. Uh, a feast for the eyes is Ed Lazari. 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 Maybe I need to let you keep saying the names. <laughs> and Gary Fields. Uh-huh. Uh, the caller coordinator is <laughs> Leah Pelosi. Signs. It's <laughs> our letter, I guess. By Dave Sharp. <laughs> and catering supervisor is Mike Lack this time. <laughs> and chief supervisor, Tom DeFalco. <laughs> the big heads are throwing a party. Ed's got a new berry antelope CD he's got on. So this is what I expect. Out There's no of... gap between these two parts of the issue either. So it's like literally it feels like, like it goes in. It, like, yeah, like, like Ed's going to get the shits what... from the apple. Yeah, this then... is this is later that night. He bit the apple and then the next page is the start of the next uh, segment. Yeah, there's no ads in the middle of this one. Not this one. Typically, we see, we've see we seen so far an ad in between to kind yes. of break up the story. You're right. And this one does feel like it just kind of goes For right like the in. 1994 hit X-Men arcade title. Oh, yeah. there's The ads are so good in this. <laughs> By the way, if you do request uh, these PDFs of these comics, they do have the original ads in them because they're just actual scans, so I guess. so fucking good. And it's awesome to see these ads. 
Uh, but this is the kind of reference I would assume we would get from a Rocco's berry My antelope. Life is a berry antelope. Yeah. But we've been getting real straight up. Like, I'm like gonna... Bruce Springsteen one should have been like Bruce Springsteen. Yes. And Stephen King should have been Stephen Kong. And Kong. it was a monkey. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's where I was like, OK, we're back in form. Like, right. This makes more sense. That, I feel more used I to this. I 100 percent agree with that. Yeah. Uh, we find out that everyone is bored at the party. They're on a horrible party. Uh, the catering is not there yet. And this party is for executives that uh, Ed works for um, so that he can be considered for a raise potential. Yeah, he wants that promotion. He seems like he always wants that promotion a lot of times, especially <laughs> in like desperate the sex and season and stuff like that. Yeah. I feel like that happens a lot. Like there's mm-hmm. different different issues and stuff where that's brought or different episodes where that's brought up. I mean, we probably all met that guy that's always looking to get that promotion. Yeah. And he's sucking up to the boss or he's doing whatever to get that promotion. But he's always up for promotion and never gets it because he's really not good enough. But nobody has the heart to tell him that yeah. he's not really there for he's it. He's the only person that's working in the house, though, too. So, I mean, he's, he's bringing home the butter, the bread and the butter yeah. and everything and the you bacon. Gotta, and, and you know, Bev's got a she's pretty randy all the time. She should, so she could start an OnlyFans. They've fans. got like, yeah, we've got <laughs> she's probably got thousands of dollars in sex toys, I would imagine. Yeah. Knowing Bev. Um, next door, Rocco and Heffer are playing kind of sex toys with frogs use or toads. <laughs> I mean, whatever. They, I mean, just regular ones. They, get, they got all the same like things, I think. So do they? I don't know. I don't really. Know. I don't know if I've seen a frog penis. I might have to look that up <laughs> later. Uh, Hef and Rock are playing uh, Monotony. Monotony, sorry. <laughs> Metonymy. I almost said Monotony, uh, which is just their play on Monopoly, which I love. Uh, and they're starving. Yes, they're hungry. Heifer smells the food that the as the catering uh, team arrives next door, the big heads, uh, which is boars head catering. And they there are boars. I don't like that. Uh, one of the boxes is imported fly lips, which is weird. That's, you know, it's expensive stuff right there. But though. also, you know, uh, it's boars head uh, spelled differently than the actual boars head company. That's true. That is a meat company that has been very well renowned for a very long time. And now we actually have seen like. The lexicon even goes back further. Like this is 1994 and Boar's Head is a company and, back then but as well. You're right. It is spelt differently and it's spelt differently than the animal because the animal mm-hmm. is spelt like the meat company. Yeah. Uh, so Boar's Head in that they're boring. I don't know. Boar as in like, I don't know, like you're such flies a boar. bore into meats. I don't know. I'm trying to think. <laughs> They've got fly parts. That's all I know. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Heifer wants to go over there because he's hungry. But uh, Rocco says they can find something at the house. Uh, but he goes into the fridge O'Dare freezer and uh, there's a Santa spider uh, that's in there, which is odd. And uh, it, it says, says feed, feed me. me feed I don't me. understand what that is about. I don't, it's so it is one of those like random more. Uh, I, Rocco has some sense and sensibility to it typically. And this is one of those random uh, kind of more Ren and Stimpy esque things where it's like, it's Where not even just a Santa from? spider. It looks like the Grinch. Like it's green, <laughs> green fly in the spider thing, in a spider web in the fridge. And it says, feed me, feed me. I guess because he's starving because he's caught in the web. Oh, it's a spider. He's got eight legs. Does he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's... So he wants fed flies because they eat flies. I guess he's starving. Maybe he's hungry. He's... I don't know. He says, sorry, have no food in the end. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so Heifer runs over to the big heads and uh, and, and uh, he goes to the front door. Ed immediately just slams that door right in Heifer's face. He's yeah. like, no, I know what kind of trouble you bring. You are not coming into here. <laughs> and so they get which is I, because we don't we have the talk face to face talks and conversations and things like that with typically always just with Rocco and Mr. Big Head. We right. don't have a ton of interaction between just heifer and mr big right Head. and i know he knows that this he's, is the he's, interaction he's friends with heifer or he, heifer is friends with rocco so he's probably not a great person in his mind yes. at that point in time right. but they don't really have conversations back and forth yeah. or anything like that like the other two do yes so like his conversation is just like get the fuck out of my house this is not <laughs> happening it's no <laughs> it's like <laughs> and like so he goes they essentially heifer just ru- goes into the bushes with rocco uh, and so then Mr. Frump, uh, who is a, a big white elephant, uh, comes up to the door next and Ed still thinks it's Heifer again and starts berating him and green slime all over on this night, nice pearly white elephant. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, and he's the white elephant in the room. He is the white elephant. He's the white elephant gift 
uh, that you give. Uh, and he's like, oh, no, that's Mr. Frump, who yeah. is Donald Frump, the zillionaire. Yeah. I like what they did there. Yes. And what is, again, what you would expect when you're mentioning somebody that is famous. Because at this point in time, we only know Donald Trump as in like, oh, he was in Home Alone too. He's yeah. a multi-billionaire who owns He's got dozens casinos of and hotels. Yeah. yeah. So you know, we, we know him from that fame. Right. Uh, Rocco and Heifer, uh, who I guess got into a fight in the bushes. I don't uh, know why. Is it just like Rocco? It's just rustling like, around and stuff it, like that. I is don't this Rocco's rage mad. again? Like, Probably. Being like, I told you not to go I, over there. Just, maybe it's just commonplace in the comics. Like they, they like they Rocco's just, yeah, more. he's just pissed off this is their way of like kind of portraying it as opposed to just like the emotions the that you would hear like and voice Rocco, and, you yeah. know things of that nature so you have to be able to see it physically here that's that true. way Good point. and then i guess maybe that's their way of doing so uh but they try the door again bev opens the door and of course lets them she in loves the boys because she loves the boys she's a horny housewife <laughs> we've established this uh heifer knows that the support parting uh party is very boring and nobody likes it what's going on and starts to put music on that everyone likes uh toe jam which i'm assuming is a pearl jam knockoff i'm assuming so has to be yeah i didn't pick that pick up on that until now as we were talking about i'm assuming that 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 seems kind of commonplace for that time that time yeah because it'd be like 94 yeah it might be like maybe vitality or vitality what is it the third album um are we already at third album by the second one was the vitality vitality or whatever it's called versus was two wasn't it was it versus I don't, I don't remember. Regardless. Tins number one. Yield is three, I think, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um regardless. Yeah, that's right. They're they're potentially rocking some animal version of uh Pearl Jam, though. Ed tries to kick them out. Uh and then but he notices that his bushes are tore up because that's what Rocco and Heifer were fighting. Yeah. In. And he's so distracted by the, I'm assuming, prized petunias again. Yeah. That uh Rocco and Heifer <laughs> just sneak back into the party. They're just they go back in. Uh, they turn out the music and continue to party as Ed is now locked out of the house. Mm-hmm. He tries to get in from the roof, but then falls into the trash with Earl. Oh, no, not Earl. Uh, while Bev dog. gets comfortable with Donald Frump. <laughs> she's uh, she's she's uh, enticed by him, which one, we know uh, that yeah. Donald Trump is a ladies man. So one. this makes sense. Uh-huh. Uh, the caterers are still bringing in the food, which it feels like it's taken them way too long to get this food in. Yeah. Uh, by now. Uh, but uh, Earl is. Uh, oh wait, oh I missed my line. Uh, and the the thought bubbles of the caterers are, who's going to eat all this food? And then they see Heifer and they go, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Rocco's telling jokes to the executives, and they like that it, and they like it as they place bets on Earl chasing around <laughs> Ed in the yard and out on the side of the yard. So now Rocco is won over all the executives. Yeah, and he's like, they're all going, look at Ed. He's getting chased, and they stand like. It, it's completely turned on Ed. I don't foresee him getting this promotion. Ed gets chased up a tree, but then jumps down at Earl yelling, Gwar! Is that like a thing? Is Gwar? At, like, where did that word come from? I, don't know, I guess it's just a form of automatopoeia at point. I don't, I don't know, recognize it. I mean, other than the band the name, band, but yeah. I don't, I don't think that. I didn't know if there was a history I, he of was that. just trying to do it to freak it out. And it does freak out. Mm-hmm. Earl. Yeah. Uh, he's like, yikes. And he freaks out because yeah. Ed's like now three times bigger than, in yeah. that panel than Earl is exactly. for some reason. He gets back in the house, kicks Rocco and Heifer out, and then everyone's like, well, if Rocco and Heifer are going to leave, I guess we'll go ahead and leave the as well. The last of the party. <laughs> yeah. So. Why are they all soaked? They're like, are they are they sweating from jamming? Did something happen? Because they have fish on them now, too. I don't know. There's nothing in any of the other things that no, would indicate no that there's anything like that. Like but, a fish tank broke or anything. But that was almost seems like what it looked like. They partied so hard they broke a fish tank. I don't know if it's like maybe they're just I they see the fish on the ground, but it um I at first I would have guessed they were just dancing so hard or something that are just drenched in sweat. Yeah. But yeah, I see a fish on the ground right there. Yeah, so and there's I, one I in no one idea. of the guy's pockets, even. I don't even see point. that right now. Uh and so it's maybe just, it's an oh yeah i see it later on it's the same red fish that's on the ground it's like he picked it's he picked like he it picked up. it up it's a completely different executive that's not even in the other panel <laughs> so i'm wondering if he just picked it. and it's dead it's it, got crosses on yes. its eyes is it a snack maybe like it's one of the things the caterer brought in i don't know potentially it, it, it's red like it looks like a swedish fish but like giant size yes um rocco uh has befriended all of the execs and obviously ed is pissed about that 
and then he goes off on Donald Trump for hitting on his wife. And uh, and Trump seems very non phased. Yeah, by this. he's just like, oh, Rocco, wait up. Like, he's not even listening to that. He's already tuned him out. <laughs> Which that seems really commonplace for what the actual Donald Trump probably would do. Yeah, if somebody, somebody was just, like just yelling at him, him or something like that, he probably just like, "Oh, hey, uh, let me catch up with you real quick," yeah. and just walk away, <laughs> ignoring them completely. Yes. Uh, so Bev then explains to Ed that the party was a flop until Rocco and Heifer showed up. So Ed slips on the dead uh, slips on the dead fish and lands where the bushes were tore up while Earl is waiting for it to get Ed have again. A bad day, like he's yep. just like things aren't coming up as aces for old Ed Bighead. No, they uh, rarely do. No, they don't. Uh, have you ever crashed a party? Birthday, mm, wedding, anything? No, not at all. Um, I have, but like not in like the traditional sense. I consider it crashing because I wasn't invited. But like my mom has a good tendency of inviting me along. Like if she was invited to a wedding. Yeah, you would get invited. I'm like well. part of her entourage somehow. And still like, <laughs> like, like yeah, to this day. Absolutely. This isn't yeah. like a, as a child. This is. As an adult, she's like, oh, Katie's getting married. You know, Katie, her brother was so-and-so, and you knew them from 20 years ago. You should come to the wedding. You're in town. And so, like, I need to go see my mom for something else or whatever. And all of a sudden, I'm at somebody's wedding randomly. <laughs> That's the closest thing I've got to crashing. But my mom's notorious for being like, oh, somebody's got a party. They didn't invite you, but they invited me. And therefore, you are invited. Going with. Yes. <laughs> This is just like basically a good excuse for free food and things, though. Uh, yes, that's usually why I go. Comics podcast day is a very dangerous day. This has been an IFNZ production. Yeah.